very warm welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow Season 8 with me, Sonali Krishna. Today we have with us a very special guest. He's the co-founder and the global CEO of the world's largest network of leading social entrepreneurs. It's called Ashoka Young Changemakers. And my guest for today is Yashveer Singh. Today I'm going to be talking to him about uh, Ashoka Young Changemakers, uh, which is doing a lot of uh, work in the social entrepreneurial space. And we're going to be uh, highlighting what this organization has done during these very, very tough and trying times to enable social entrepreneurs to do their bit and their best during this pandemic. Thank you so much, uh, Yashvi, for joining us today right here on Leaders of Tomorrow. Happy to have you on the show. Thank you, Sonali. Really excited to be part of the show and uh, thanks for inviting me to be uh, a guest uh, today. Given, you know, your prolific uh, CV uh, for the uninitiated and for my benefit, if you could, you know, first give us, uh, you know, broad strokes of what Ashoka is and then come down to what Ashoka, you know, uh, young change makers are, uh, it would give us a good sense of what this organization is really about. Sonali, Ashoka is one of the largest network of social entrepreneurs in the world. Our founder, Mr. Bill Drayton, started the organization in the year 1980. And the idea was simple that uh, he wanted to build a community of leading social entrepreneurs globally. Uh, since 1980, we have supported 4,000 social entrepreneurs by awarding them uh, something called Ashoka Fellowship. And our main role uh, in Ashoka in last 40 years has been searching, selecting and supporting these social entrepreneurs. Uh, and today also we continue to look for these inspiring social entrepreneurs who we believe have ideas which are historic and which are setting a force in motion. Uh, so currently Ashoka's uh, vision is that we want to support these social entrepreneurs who are uh, dealing with some of the most pressing challenges of our society. And uh, then we also want to work with some of the leading forces or leading partners of our times to create a society where everyone can be a change maker. So very quickly now to share, after working with these social entrepreneurs for so many decades, one of the quick realizations or insights Ashoka got was that most of these social entrepreneurs started very young. So they started their first initiatives to solve a problem around them when they were teenagers. And essentially what, what they were doing was that they were building a certain set of mindset and skill set in them, uh, which helped them to become the social entrepreneur who, who take on to some big challenge around them or uh, in their region or in their country. So for us, it became very obvious that if we want to now create a world where everyone is a change maker, we need to involve young people with us, right? And we need to create an ecosystem where young people can aspire to become change makers very early on. And that's how uh, two years back, uh, we launched something called Ashoka Young Change Makers, which is a equivalent community of Ashoka Fellowship, but for teenagers. And what we have seen is since then, now we are present in five countries and uh, scaling up in the coming time to different other countries also. And we are seeing huge, tremendous movement which is building amongst young people, not just to build their own initiatives, but help other young people also become change makers. Before I get into, you know, details about, uh, you know, what what is it that you are picking up uh, in terms of the pulse on ground, uh, just for my understanding, uh, you know, what... What is exactly a social entrepreneur and how do you identify one? Right. So very broadly speaking, a social entrepreneur is someone uh, who is committing for the good of all. They really believe in creating social value. And uh, Ashoka's criteria when we find a social entrepreneur as an Ashoka fellow has five important components. The very first one is someone needs to have a system changing new idea uh, with them. The second important aspect is that they need to have the entrepreneurial ability to build that idea into an organization, which is you build teams, you have the ability to build partnerships, any sort of entrepreneurial ability which any entrepreneur has. The third is they need to be really committed to social impact. The fourth bit would be they need to be very creative in their solutions because most of the times the issue they are de dealing with are not very linear and there, there are so many complexities. So how they are creative in designing their solution or building their idea. 
And the last bit is they need to be very strong on ethical and moral fiber, who can be trusted uh, in terms of their, their efforts and their interventions. So these are the four or five bits we look at in a social entrepreneur. But essentially, we are looking for someone who is committed for the good of all and who wants to create social value and wants to challenge uh, some of the root causes of the problem which has been existing for long. So that's that's what we look in a social entrepreneur. And those people who meet these criteria, we elect them as uh, Ashoka Fellows. You know, ensuring further understanding, can you cite a few examples of such social entrepreneurs you've picked and are grooming in India? So one, I think a, uh, a very uh, prominent one uh, who we picked in early 2000s uh, is his name is Anshu Gupta, uh, who runs uh, something uh, called Gooj as an organization, very uh, prominent and doing deep uh, yeah, work sure. even during these COVID times. Um, uh, Mr. Anshu Gupta's wound model was something very simple where they wanted to restore dignity of uh, people living in uh, rural areas and they, they were using cloth as a tool for that, right? And, and it was a very community-based approach uh, which uh, they took. Uh, the second example I can give you is of more recent uh, new Ashoka fellow which we have just identified. His name is Mr. Abhinav Agarwal. Uh, who's trying to restore the folk music industry in India because a lot of folk musicians do not have market access. They do not know how to market their music or who do not even have the skills to really take their challenge to masses. So what Abhinav is doing through Anahat Foundation is giving those skills and those tools to these folk musicians across India, which one helps, of course, in restoring their dignity, but also is helping them in livelihood because now they are able to create uh, more more packaged versions of their music which can be broadcasted on internet they are doing live shows and so many other things fantastic and very very heartening that you know such initiatives are are being taken on uh, by citizens of the country and social entrepreneurs uh, how would you say you know they have coped uh, with uh, the impact of COVID-19 what has been some of the biggest challenges you've seen on ground for social entrepreneurs to continue uh, you know their business and their activities as is so there are two three patterns which i can share there uh, one is uh, very quickly they uh, pivoted their model around what is the most immediate needs so i was talking recent, uh, just uh, now about akash who's a young change maker 20 21 year old and his model was to use temple waste to create these products through jail inmates uh, very quickly when the COVID situation came, uh, what he did is he pivoted his model around making masks and some of the products which could be used in this situation. So essentially what he did is his operations were not halted, but he was able to use this challenge as an opportunity and pivot his model around that. That's number uh, one. The second important aspect which definitely emerges is one of our another social entrepreneur, his name is Mr. Neil Kanmishra, who used to work in promoting inland fisheries uh, working with farmers and low-income groups. And what he felt is during this COVID time is maybe there is an online digital platform he can create where he can train uh, young people around fisheries and how they can uh, uh, really benefit from it by generating some income, but also uh, helping their, their own nutrition and, and food supply and so on and so forth. So the another aspect which I'm trying to touch is uh, some of them very creatively, wherever possible, they were able to uh, bring technology into their operations. They did that. Of course, it required uh, them some sort of capital, some sort of support. Um, but that's the second pattern. Uh, but the challenges are, are more bigger for social entrepreneurs than any business entrepreneur. Because as I said, social entrepreneurs are committed for the good of all. They ne not necessarily have huge chunks of cash flow to survive. Uh, in, in a situation where they have to pay the staff and the incomes were lower or their products or services do not have the same uh, sort of market uh, currently. So in those situations, I think uh, they are just trying to be innovative what best can be done. But that's also a challenge, right? Because uh, not everyone has answers. The funding also is uh, a uncertainty at the moment, specifically for not-for-profits and social entrepreneurs who are working on needs which are not related to COVID. So these are some of the challenges and some of the patterns we are seeing uh, from the ground. But uh, the the innovation and, and looking this challenge as an opportunity is the common thread I'm, I'm seeing from the social entrepreneurs.
glad you uh, you know touched upon uh, funding you know uh, today you know across the board whether it's uh, you know a regular entrepreneur a small business a startup everybody is trapped uh, for funds and i'm sure it's the same scenario with social entrepreneurs uh, how is that being dealt with uh, and what are the kind of uh, on ground options available for the social entrepreneurs to utilize funding you know in this very very cash trapped environment yes sir. so that's a very important one of the biggest challenges because as i was saying in march they had a plan in place that this is what they are going to do these these are uh, the ways by which they will raise their fund and everyone in this uncertainty has uh, held back on some of uh, the funding and, and it has been definitely uh, much more uh, trickier now uh, one of the things which i am observing by some of these social entrepreneurs is that a lot of them are now coming together and what that means is that uh, they are trying to leverage each other's ability and uh, trying to help each other in, in this pandemic. I was talking about the example of, say, uh, Mr. Neelkan Mishra, uh, who is working on developing inland fisheries. I, I, I was speaking to him and he has partnered with another uh, of our Ashoka fellow. His name is Mr. Ajit Singh. And they jointly are now working together because one has expertise in uh, developing fisheries, the other has the expertise in the skill uh, development space. Uh, and both of them are coming together, the teams are coming together, and then they are also picking up uh, partnerships with governments and other institutions. And what we are also seeing is there also it becomes much more stronger in which if you have more holistic intervention uh, rather than just one approach. So that's one bit which is uh, helping. Secondly, last six months were definitely around uh, addressing the needs of COVID. But now we all are seeing that the biggest uh, challenge this COVID has created is livelihoods. So I'm also seeing globally a lot of bigger foundations are committing very de dedicated funds around social entrepreneurs who are trying to create livelihoods on the ground. So there is a lot of call for proposals and people are trying to now change some of their models or some of their plans uh, because uh, uh, because now that's the need. So that's another trend which is building. But of course, it's too, re uh, too recent for people to... Uh, completely have a clear plan. So that's another thing that the sectoral funding is going more towards the needs which are more uh, immediate. The third bit and the last which I would see uh, say is that now a lot of the social entrepreneurs have realized that the models around where there will be few entrepreneurs leading is now changing to a, a uh, world where everyone needs to contribute or in Ashoka's language we call it as everyone a change maker. Right. So another aspect is uh, when you work with community, how can you make that community as equal stakeholders? And that ensures part of their sustainability of the model or what they are trying to do. Would you say that it's going to be increasingly difficult for these social entrepreneurs to raise funds, uh, you know, going forward because, uh, you know, business itself is, is trying to survive at this point? Uh, we're definitely uh, heading into uh, you know a very very tough economic scenario uh, and more and more people are going to find it hard to raise funds and sustain their businesses in such a scenario if I had to ask you to compare you know a regular uh, business entrepreneur uh, you know and juxtapose that with a social entrepreneur uh, how difficult or or easy will that survival be uh, you know business versus social so in short term, certainly uh, both business and social entrepreneurs are struggling. There are only very few sectors, a few interventions, even in the business sector, which are doing well, but majority of the businesses uh, also are struggling. And the same is true for social entrepreneurs also. And the struggle is more around that they had a plan and they had uh, uh, strategized that this is what their intervention is going to be. And now the world has changed in some sense. So uh, definitely they need to uh, change their models and what they are doing. So in short term, uh, my simple uh, direct answer would be yes, it's, it's a challenge. But then the, on the long term, what I also see is the whole point of of existence of social entrepreneurs is because they are trying to address the needs and gaps in the society. And in the post-COVID world, uh, of course, there will be a lot of new needs and new gaps which are going to uh, emerge. Uh, and around that, of course, the, the different market forces, different uh, governments are also going to align uh, their funding or their approaches. So what I, what I feel is in long term, so social entrepreneurship as a sector will emerge because it's more agile. 
it it is more creative and it will pivot very quickly which we are already seeing around the emerging needs so as long as humanity exists of course there will be needs maybe the models earlier there there were a lot of people in urban areas who might migrate to rural areas which we have seen in the last few months but it's still in rural areas you need to have models you need to have sustainable businesses you need to have uh, so citizen sector organizations who can intervene in this spaces like education healthcare and so on and so forth so i i see there will be a little bit of disturbance in short term because uh any change is is uncomfortable but what i see is the relevance and the importance and the ability to raise fund in long term will not go down because uh, people will pilot and uh, social entrepreneurs will be able to innovate in in the changes of in their model and according to the changing needs of the society would you say that covid 19 has given the social entrepreneurship space or sector a further uh, an impetus to become even more important and relevant in a post covid world certainly so not just uh, the covid even before that one of the ideas ashoka was uh, propagating is how do we create a world where everyone is a change maker because what we saw was the rate of change anyways was uh, increasing in this covid as i said earlier it was unannounced so we didn't know how to quickly prepare ourselves so the relevance of social entrepreneurs is becoming much and uh, much more important uh, if you look even at the business entrepreneurs they are trying to really look inside that what is the real purpose of any business uh, of course bottom line is important of course uh, creating revenues and profits is important but the overall well being of society for employees is again uh, at the center of even business entrepreneurs so it definitely uh, was a wake up call for business entrepreneurs and for social entrepreneurs it has thrown a new opportunity where i would feel in the post covid world many more uh, young people will now look up to come out with social entrepreneurial ventures ideas uh, and the and the overall acceptance of this as a sector for for the well being of our society is only going to go up after this pandemic you said there is there will be a pivot in terms of the kind of you know issues or stances people take in the social entrepreneurial space you know because covid will bring about a lot more disparity whether it be amongst you know the rich and the poor the jobless and and you know whatever else we're going to see as we battle this pandemic uh so there's definitely going to be a, a big big disparity of income as well uh what do you think will be the new areas uh, of social entrepreneurship which are possibly uh new explorations not have been explored in a pre covid world so sonali uh, in the short term as i said livelihoods and skills is going to be a huge area of focus uh because one thing which we have all realized now is that sure. the old sure. paradigm in which you had a thinking that you will have one job and you will uh, complete your life with just uh, on that job is changing we are seeing young people need to be now lifelong learners you need to have skills which are timeless uh and and the demand for even skills which is uh transient uh, is is going down certainly so uh, on your point yes what we are seeing is uh, that there were already existing inequal inequalities in the world and now there is this new inequality which is emerging uh, which is around that do you have that ability that you can adapt and contribute to change and uh, that ability ashoka calls as a change maker ability and what we are seeing is that post covid now there will be a huge focus in building human potential specifically of young people to be able to deal and contribute to this change uh, and once we have more and more young people coming out with the, that ability uh, that will lead to a lot of innovation because at the end of the day uh, it is all about uh, local solutions for some of the local problems and uh, i'll give you just one story so two of our ashoka young change makers recently came out with uh, this initiative called udyami utsav uh, and their goal was that how can we create har ghar entrepreneur right that every household needs to have an entrepreneur now and the kind of response they were getting from small town and rural areas and coming out with ideas innovations was unprecedented uh that was not the excitement uh, a few months back or even few years back so what we are seeing is yes more, as the challenges emerge more people need to come out with the solutions and as ashoka and as 
community of social entrepreneurs and young change makers our role we see is how quickly we can make society see that is this new world if you really want to be on the right side of the new inequality then you need to be a change maker because the only way we can all live happily and uh, dealing with challenges continuously is if everyone has that inner power of creating change and adapting to change and that's what is is one of the key uh, insights uh, uh, which is emerging in this post covid world fair enough uh, on that note uh, thank you so much ashveer for your time uh, thank you for your good work uh, hopefully uh, going forward with ashoka's support we'll see a lot more social entrepreneurs uh, not just pivot uh, you know take up new issues but also thrive and uh, you know uh, educate india and be, uh, being a more socially relevant society thank you so much thank you so much sonali it was a honor to be on the panel thank you